Our faith in Christ and what I saw about Christ on that occasion. I'm not talking about a story that somebody made up and then passed it along as truth. As a matter of fact, Peter said, I saw it for myself. When you look back at our text, Peter says in verse number 16 that we have not followed cunningly devised fables right. when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter said, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, saying that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Peter said that this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount and we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost what are you saying Peter Peter said what I'm telling you as far as my faith in Jesus what I pass on to you came from a revelation of God because I was there in the holy mountain it was on that occasion that Matthew records in Matthew chapter 17 just six days after Jesus had proclaimed the fact that he was going to build his church and that the gates of hell were not going to prevail against it. That Jesus took Peter, James, and John up into a high mountain apart and the Bible says began to be transfigured right before their eyes. When you look at Dr. Luke's account in chapter 9, Luke said that Jesus took them up there so that they could pray and that it was while he was praying that his face started to shine above the sign of the new day sun that his raiment became as white as light and started glistening. It was on that occasion that Jesus was accompanied with some company. One, one of them's name was Moses and the other was Elijah and the Bible said that they were there talking with him. As a matter of fact, Dr. Luke records that they was talking about his decease that was going to be accomplished there in Jerusalem as Moses and Elijah was standing on top of the mountain talking to Jesus about what was going to happen to him. Peter happened to open his eyes and to see Moses, Elijah, and Jesus talking together, being caught up in the moment. That's when Peter said that, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us make him three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. It was at that moment that the Bible said that a bright cloud overshadowed them and there came a voice from the cloud that said that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased to hear ye him and so that was the account that Peter was talking about here in this text when Peter said we didn't follow some cunningly devised fable but I was there on the mountain when Jesus face did shine I was there when I saw his garment become as white as the light. I was there when I saw Moses standing up there with him. I was there when I saw Elijah on the other side. I was there when they talked about how he was going to die in Jerusalem. I was there when the cloud came over the mountain. I was there when the voice of God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And so when Peter said that we haven't followed some cunningly devised fable, Peter said, I know what I'm talking about because I saw it with my own eyes. I heard it 
with my own ears. Uh, and as long as I'm in this body, uh, I'm going to keep you stirred up uh, concerning the faith that we all know about. Uh, we've got something more sure because this word of prophecy is not by any private interpretation. Uh, this ain't something that some man made up. Uh, this ain't something that some man has devised and schemed in his garage uh, and decided to stand out there on the street corner with a sign up on this legs hollering about something that he done came up with. When we talk about Jesus, we know about the Lord that we talk about because I heard the voice from heaven and God verified from heaven that this is the only one that you need to listen to because this is my beloved son in whom I will please and if you don't hear anybody, hear him. That's what we're talking about. We ain't found some cunningly devised fable. Right. And that's what we're going to deal with this week Amen. in this meeting. Amen. There are people religiously yeah. that are following some cunningly yeah. devised yeah. fable. Yeah. Something that a man invented. Yeah. Something he craftily slick lit. Yeah. <laughs> Then passes it off as if it's true. Yeah. Cunning. Yeah. Mean he can tell that lie so good right. that it sounds like the truth. All right. And folk will fight you over. Yeah. They sure will. Yeah. Men trying to tell them they're wrong if you want to. Yeah. Dad right. not go against their pastor bishop. All right. Bishop said it must be true. All right. Cunningly. Devised that came from his own mind. Because yeah. yeah. see, if you're going to be right with God, the main thing that you need to be concerned with mm -hmm. is only the thoughts right. and the precepts mm -hmm. that come from the mind of God. Yeah. Yeah. And in First Peter, in First Corinthians chapter two, the apostle, the apostle Paul indicates that we know what came from the mind of God right. because we got it from the Spirit of God, yeah. and the Spirit led these men to write it down. This here ain't no guesswork. We got book, chapter, and verse. Amen. We ain't got to scratch our head and wonder how to look in the book. And I can tell you what God was thinking when he was thinking what he was thinking. Yeah. Because he revealed it to us. Yeah. When it comes to our salvation. When it comes to how to be right with him. Yes. Not a cunningly devised faith. It's so all week long, Lord's will, we're going to speak from this particular angle. Speak from this particular subject. And just reveal some things. That men have cunningly devised and passed it out in religion Amen. as if it came from God. Mm -hmm. It didn't come from God. My friends, you have the right to know Amen. that it didn't come from God. Because if it didn't come from God, God is not going to accept it. Amen. Did you hear what God said Amen. to Peter? This is my beloved son in whom I well, please yeah. hear ye him. God, God never had a plan for no tabernacle of Moses. Amen. We ain't got nothing against Moses. Great leader, great man of God, Amen. stood before God like a man talks with another man, the Bible said. Amen. But he ain't got no business with no tabernacle. Amen. 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 prophet of God stood by himself against 450 prophets of them. Right. Stood firm and told the folk who God really was. Right. Ask him why y'all having a hard time making up your mind. <laughs> yeah, right. God is God serve him. Yeah. Baal is God serve him. I'm going to show you who God is today. Right. Right. God yeah. called him God called him God. <laughs> God showed him who he was. Right. And a part with Elijah. Elijah ain't got no business right. with no talent. Amen. 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 See, the only thing we were trying to get you to see today is that Bishop ain't got no business with his own talent. Amen. Amen. Brother Pastor ain't got no business with his own talent. 
And see, that's why in that tabernacle, they do what they do called that bad tabernacle. Amen. If you ever want to be right with God, Amen. come into the church that you can read about in the Bible. Amen. One that's not after a cunningly devised faithful, Amen. you will become a member of the church of Christ. Amen. 